Hey everyone, it's Daryl from Houseplant Journal, and today I am here visiting Verd Alcove. Well, the home. This is her plant truck. But we're gonna go in and check out her houseplant collection. Hey Angela. Hi. Good to see you. Yes, great to see you. So uh, tell everyone who you are on Instagram. I am Verde Alcove. Hi everyone. Oh, I've been just saying Verde. Verde. Okay, mm -hmm. good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Let's uh, let's just have a seat and uh, get started. Sounds good. Okay, so um, classical question: How did all, all all of this get started? With your houseplants? So it really started, I think, very similarly to a lot of people that are trying to seek ways of healthier living. Mm -hmm. So when you think of health and wellness, and then also how to kind of create a calming oasis in the home. Mm -hmm. And um, I had a really stress, a very stressful job being in software sales for many years. Mm -hmm. And um, the funny thing is when I would get stressed at like a conference, a call or a meeting, I would go in my backyard and start weeding. And so that's <laughs> how I got into gardening was because, you know, if there was a call or a meeting and it didn't go out as planned, um, then I would just relieve that stress by just pulling, pulling weeds. Out weeds yeah. And then naturally that got me interested in indoor houseplants. Mm -hmm. And um, when I started getting ideas of, okay, well, what kind of plants are, are going to start, you know, well in the home. I started with like the traditional little bookshelf. I had three or four plants. Yeah. And then the obsession somehow triggered. It's always snowballs to be uh, yes. from, from like a few to 50 or something, right? <laughs> yes. So it started with only a couple in the corner on a small little Ikea shelf. Yeah. And then quickly that shelf like was maximized of a bunch of plants. And then I had to get a second one because it was like, oh, I have to maximize the light. Mm -hmm. And then we upgraded the shelving unit. So it was like kind of maximizing the floor space because we only have like 850 square feet here in you know my home. So we had to really kind of think vertically as well. Yeah. But um, that's kind of how it all started and just kind of transformed into <laughs> its own kind of thing <laughs> yeah cool yeah it's it's really cool to you know i i've been following you for a little while and i see your see your collection online and you know uh, all we know that on instagram you're just seeing a tiny little square of it right yes. and then it's, it's just really cool to see the whole collection uh, in its entirety and uh yeah and all the imperfections as we know that are just part of having plants around yes yes you know and and it's funny because i was thinking to myself in preparation of you coming i was like <laughs> Should I like Do some spruce up? Or yeah, <laughs> like should I spruce up my plants? Should I remove all the ugly leaves? Like, what should I do? And I was like, no, because you know, Daryl appreciates the authenticity of how we really live, mm -hmm. and it's important for people to see what it's like living with plants. They are never going yeah. to be perfect, as you have, you know, always say. You know, plants are living life forms, so we can't expect for them to be perfect. Mm -hmm. It's just unrealistic. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So um, anyway, well, then why don't we go and take a look around at your collection? You can just tell me about okay. some of your favorite plants and uh, maybe I'll just say like, oh, what's that guy? So, you know, yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, that's cool. So right. this is, you know, my main plant shelfie in my living space. And it's because of the dual cornered windows. Mm -hmm. So this is where I had to maximize the space. And what started as like really small, low uh, Ikea bookshelves quickly got upgraded to these um, retired Ikea Stolman shelving uh, units. Uh, they're actually retired, but Ikea did come out with like a more updated version of it. But this allowed us to truly maximize kind of the square footage of our you know window space. So um, I have like a lot of like the classics that a lot of people have. Uh, the jade plant, which was my first plant. I love this plant. That, because that one right there is your very first plant? Yes. This beautiful, is my beautiful. very first plant. And someone told me you can't kill it. And I'm a witness and proof of that. <laughs> so, <laughs> Because I didn't know what I was doing when I first got it. And, um, and then you'll see this is a peperomia green. 
Mm -hmm. And you know, I love this plant because it's so hardy. And you'll see these yellowing leaves at the bottom. And it's because I didn't water it for a month. <laughs> and sometimes when you have so many plants that you're caring for kind of in multiple places, there are certain ones that accidentally get neglected. Mm -hmm. And so this is one. But, you know, even though plants wear their medical history on their leaves, the plant is still healthy and it's still vibrant and there's new growth coming out. So it's it's a beautiful plant, and I kind of appreciate that the plant was telling me, "Hey, don't forget to yeah. water me." <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> this this uh, little shelf down here looks like you have a lot of amazing propagations going on. Yes. So this is kind of like my main propagation station, and um, I started propagating these string of pearls about uh, I want to say about two years ago. Oh, okay. And um, I've left them in here because once, you know, they've acclimated to water for so long, the root, it's very hard at that point to, to kind of reintroduce them to soil. And so it's so fascinating. They continue to grow like you see the new growth here just from the water. And it's plain tap water, like no liquid nutrients, nothing added. Oh, wow. Interesting. Yes. I mean, plants, their ability to survive and adapt it's really unprecedented so that's why i'm always constantly fascinated oh here you see a couple of stem cuttings of my uh, begonia madame o'reilly oh yeah and they'll i see that they root but have you seen them uh produce like new new stems from that you know i have not seen it yet but i'm seeing some green right here and i'm actually oh, yeah. quite okay, curious see. if it looks like i don't know if that's algae or if something else is growing from there. But I'm keeping a close eye on it because you'll notice there, I mean, it, it looks like little baby leaves actually. Hmm. Yeah, but, I'll have to take a closer look and uh, yeah. see. But uh, yeah, because that's not, whoop, because <laughs> that's not, uh, that's not a root right there. And it's kind of bunched up, but I think those are little leaves. I don't know, we'll have to check that out further. Mm hmm. But um, but I have heard from a couple of my friends on Instagram that are big uh, begonia collectors that it can reproduce from, new, just from the, new organs. Just from the petiole. Yes. Wow. Isn't that fascinating? So begonias are one of those rare plants that, get, that has that ability, just like some peperomias, like peperomia yeah. watermelon. Because those guys can even do it just from leaf culture, right? You just yes. cut the leaf and it comes out of the vein of the leaf? Yes, yeah. which is so fascinating. <laughs> and it's funny because I did an experiment of the water, the peperomia watermelon and then a pelia peppermyotis because yeah. they look the look same. So, yeah, yeah. But no, nothing happened with the pelia. It's, mm. it's not rooting. But it's the a... watermelon took off. So there's okay. roots and everything. Cool. Um, this is a uh, Monstera adansonii. Mm -hmm. I love this plant, even though it's looking not its best. I love it because this was one of my um, my earlier plants that died off when I was new in like you know my plant journey, mm -hmm. and I was able to salvage a stem, and then I kind of made more cuttings out of it, and this is what it is now. But the fascinating thing about this is because it, it you can see from its medical history, it went through some <laughs> hard times, you'll notice that it reverted back to full leaves. So it lost the fenestrations. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. And that was simply because I wasn't watering it um, on time like I should have. And it got a little bit of neglect as well. So it started off with the fenestrations and then reverted back to full leaves. Hmm. So in order for me to reverse this, I'm going to, once I get to my to-do list, I'll probably insert a plant stake, yep. let it climb. Get because, it climbing, yeah. Because exactly. then it's like, oh, I'm going up, ready fenestrations. Yes. And so that'll definitely turn things around. But, you know, I can never throw away or discard any cuttings. I'm always <laughs> obsessed with trying to fix them. Um, let's see. Ooh, my favorite plant, I'd have to say, out of all my plants is this beauty. This is oh, my zebra plant. Yes. Oh, I love. And in fact, if I take her out, it's fascinating because I've always thought that ZZ, or I mean, sorry, zebra plants don't really last all that long indoors. But uh, maybe I, you're going to tell me otherwise. I love mine. Hmm. So I repotted her three times this year. 
Oh, wow. Okay. And then she also has some roots pe peeping out the bottom. So yeah. I will probably repot her real quick before it gets really, really cold. <laughs> She's living her best life. Um, you'll notice some yellowing at the bottom. And that's, you know, she's going through the phase. It's fall now. So she's conserving energy mm -hmm. um, and water. But, and, and this is the spot where she lives. Um, so normally I will have her here on the shelf uh, okay. during yeah. uh, parts of the day. And yeah. then I'll move her here when I move the grow light out here for the rest of the plants. Because now that it's fall in the shorter days, you need I, the, yeah. Yeah, I need that additional light. So I just you know brought back this grow light that I had uh, in storage. But um, this is my favorite plant. Hmm. I love the zebra plant. It's so easy. It's so low maintenance. She loves the indirect light. Sometimes during the summer, I'll put her um, at a west facing window so she'll get a little bit of afternoon light. Mm -hmm. But this girl, she continues to produce new growth. So there are some babies there. Wow, nice. And although I went a little too long without watering her on time, you'll see some scarring here where there were some leaves here, but they fell off. So oh, two I there. thought that was maybe a, a pruning point, but I guess it's self pruned. <laughs> it did. It did. And so when it did that, it fell off. And then these two new baby leaves emerged. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I tell people when when you do prune, don't be afraid to cut the plant because it's always going to grow back. Yeah. But this is my favorite plant. I love the wow. zebra plant. The, the stripes are striking. Oh, I definitely. Mean, yeah. It's just a plant that you know it does not go unnoticed that's for sure <laughs> oh then maybe maybe i'll give it a try then because i always thought that they you know maybe would become really leggy very easily but i guess if you know if if, if i give it that biggest view of the sky like you have like yes. sitting up here then it'll probably uh stay a bit fuller for me and you know i tell people all the time because um when i heard you say you know, I know you say it a lot, but I think it was uh, maybe a year ago or maybe even two years ago when you said, you know, let your plant see the sky. And I was like, that is such a great description. And so I, when I tell people when they ask for plant care tips, I'm like, make sure they're seeing as much sky as possible because indirect light is not the best light for some plants mm -hmm. but when they can see as much sky as possible it makes a tremendous amount of difference right. so um yeah i'll never <laughs> forget what you said about make sure they see as much sky as possible yeah it, it's really meant to be more of a giving you like the caretaker some way to check for indirect light because if, if we don't if we just said bright indirect light then a lot of times people are just like oh so that means here or here or there right but yes. if i'm saying as much sky as possible now that's telling you basically right there right? you're so right about that because people usually ask what is indirect light yeah and yeah. then i'm like oh you know what for someone like us we'll know it immediately but someone that's new that's just starting their plant their house plant journey mm -hmm. it's like okay yep i gotta describe it a little bit more yeah, yeah. <laughs> now my other plant that i really really love so speaking of not seeing this guy necessarily <laughs> <laughs> yes so this is my poor, poor um, lemon lime dracaena. And mm -hmm. this girl, she was lush. She was full. And you'll notice she's all the way in this corner. So really far away from the window. Mm -hmm. But there's a little trick where I've placed a mirror behind her. So yes. that mirror is reflecting the light from the window. Ah. And that's how it's been able to survive and thrive now she definitely had much better days um unfortunately what happened i was repotting her i left her outside because i got a phone call and then i totally forgot she was out in the sun and she got so severely sunburned like literally almost all of her leaves uh went black oh wow yeah so when i first saw it i was like oh no what did i do and uh, when I brought her inside immediately, it was literally over a course of one week where I was just slowly watching the leaves just brown, mm. just brown all the way. And so I was just removing them. It was <laughs> so sad. Uh, but she, you see, plants are the ultimate survivor. So yep. new growth. Continue to grow, yeah. Exactly. Now, because she's not by that window, it's taking her much longer for her 
to bounce back, but she's still doing very well. She's acclimated to this space mm -hmm. and she's, you know, any signs of new growth that's healthy, that's always a good thing. But you'll see these little blemishes on her and it's like kind of like uh, beauty marks, it's scarring. <laughs> Yeah, or, or I always say it's like the marks of character, right? Because then <laughs> yes. otherwise, otherwise, you, like, what do you really want your plants to look like everybody else's, right? You want no. them to be uniquely for you, right? Exactly. And I think, I think I read in one of your posts, uh, uh, maybe a year or two ago, but your post when you said, if you look at the plants outside, you will not find a perfect plant, even mm -hmm. in the most perfect conditions outdoors. There's going to be blemishes. Yeah. And I remember I went outside and I was looking at the trees and the bushes around my house. And I was like, oh, yeah, there's a bunch of browning. There's some spots. There's some discoloration. But the plants are still thriving and healthy. For sure. And so I've always remembered that. And, you know, these blemishes, they are character. They are beauty marks. And like people, when we have scars from like an injury, if we fall off a For bike, sure, yeah. it's, it's character. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely.